Kamusta naman kayong lahat dyan? Magandang araw sa inyong lahat. At uh, welcome once again to another video on our channel. Yes! Very interesting ang ating video for today. Pe, dahil uh, pantamantala, medyo maglalaylo muna tayo dun sa ating application for a New Zealand bilang teacher. No? Babalik muna tayo sa Pilipinas, pero nandito pa rin ako sa New Zealand. So, babalikan muna natin kasi may bago tayong update na gustong uh, ibigay sa inyo. This is regarding the Results-Based Performance Management System o ang ating RPMS. Tama po ang narinig nyo. RPMS 2023 Updated Guidelines. Handa na ba kayo? So, yun na nga. Sa madami nagtatanong sa akin ng tungkol sa RPMS, nagko-comment sa ating mga uh, past videos tungkol sa RPMS. Remember, meron tayong 19 series of RPMS videos dito sa ating channel. Dati, bago lumabas ang uh, DepEd Memorandum na to, ang, nata ang lagi kong sagot sa kanila, we would probably stay on the same guidelines dahil up to that time, wala pang linalabas ang Department of Education. But, However, just last Friday, February 3, 2023, a DepEd Memorandum was issued entitled The Multi-Year Guidelines on the Resource-Based Performance Management System, Philippine Professional Standards for Teachers, and this is under the DepEd Memorandum number 008, Series of 2023. Ayan. Pag-usapan natin kung ano-ano ba ang mga pagbabago sa updated guidelines ng ating RPMS for this school year. Nagkaroon ng malaking pagbabago po. Medyo malaki talaga yung pagbabago at uh, medyo madugo pero syempre kakayanin natin lahat yan. Tayo pa ba? Wala namang ibinigay sa atin na hindi natin kinaya. Tama ba? Kaya-kaya natin to. So, among the changes, ang mababanggit ko as a start is that previously, we created an RPMS portfolio with 19 objectives. Limang KRA, 19 objectives. For this new updated RPMS guidelines, we are just going to make a 15 objectives from 5 KRAs po. Yun lang ang magiging laman ng ating portfolio for the next 3 years. Tama po. Dahil ang nakalagay sa title ng ating uh, memorandum, multi-year guidelines. Ibig sabihin, this is not just applicable for one year, for this school year, but this will be applicable for three years. Ngayong taon na to, 2022 to 2023, and then 23 to 24, 24 to 25, kasama po siya. Lahat yan, yan tatlong taon na yan, ay uh, under these guidelines. Okay? So, 15 objectives po tayo sa tatlong taon na yon tig 15 objectives, kung saan we, are, we will try to implement the 37 uh, indicators from PPST. So, yung 37 indicators po ng Philippine Professional Standards for Teachers ay ikakalat dun sa tatlong taon na RPMS portfolio po ng mga teachers that will be 15 objectives each year. Malabo? Malilinawan din kayo. Maiintindihan niya rin yan. For now, pag-usapan muna natin ang tungkol sa DepEd number 008 series of 2023 which was released February 3, 2023 entitled Multi-Year Guidelines on the Results-Based Performance Management System Philippine Professional Standards for Teachers. 
Okay, so ito po yung uh, guidelines na ilinabas ng Department of Education, the DepEd Memorandum number 008, series of 2023. I will leave a link sa ating description box kung paano nyo po ito pwedeng ma-download. Okay? So, this is entitled the Multi-Year uh, Guidelines on the Resource-Based Performance Management System Philippine uh, Professional Standards for Teachers. So, isa-isahin lang natin para mas madali nating maintindihan. Number one, consistent with DepEd Order number 2 series of 2015, prescribing the guidelines on the establishment and implementation of the RPMS in the Department of Education and pursuant to Section 5 of a DepEd Order number 42 series of 2017 on the National Adoption and Implementation of the PPST which mandates that all performance appraisals for teachers shall be based on this set of standards, okay? So, nagpo-follow pa rin yung memorandum na to dun sa nakaraan nating mga DepEd issuances. Number two, geared towards competency-based performance management, professional development, and career progression, the PPST-based RPMS for teachers shall utilize all the 37 indicators of the PPST and shall be distributed across three school years. So, ito lang po yung binabanggit ko kanina. No? So, para po sa bago nating guidelines, lahat po ng 37 indicators galing sa PPST shall be utilized. Hindi katulad ng mga nakaraan nating paggagawa ng RPMS, no? na hindi lahat, in not all 37 indicators has been utilized. This time, gagamitin na po natin ang all 37 indicators of the PPST and this will be distributed across the three school years. Hindi naman to, hindi naman po ito gagawin ng isang bagsak sa isang RPMS for school year. So ito po ay i-distribute sa tatlong taon. Kung saan magkakaroon po ng 15 objectives ang ang ating RPMS per school year. Number 3, this memorandum shall cover all teachers in public elementary and secondary schools and community learning centers including, including those assigned to teach under the ALS, the SPED, and the Madrasa Education. Okay, number four. Furthermore, the RPMS timeline for the next three years, three school years shall be aligned with the annual school calendar and activities issued by the department. Okay. Number five, for more information, please contact the Bureau of Human Resource and Organizational Development. So, yun po yung uh, first phase ng ating memorandum. So, uh, uh, included in the enclosures, ito na po ang pagpapaliwanag ng tungkol sa bago nating guidelines. Regarding the multi-year guidelines on the results-based performance management system, Philippine Professional Standards for Teachers. Okay. So the first one, the first diagram shows the RPMS cycle for teachers. More or less parehas pa rin naman po ito nung ating nakasanayan ng guideline, I mean cycle, RPMS cycle. So meron tayong apat na phase, phases sa ating RPMS cycle. Na the first one, ito yung performance, planning, and commitment. Okay? So, nandito ang ginagawa natin dito. Dito tayong gumagawa ng mga discussion and uh, issuance of RPMS tools at saka yung mga self-assessment. Ano? So, ang mga forms na ginagamit natin during uh, the performance, planning, and commitment, yung ating IPCRF, IPCRF yung ating uh, self-assessment tool, ah... Uh, Individual Development Plan, yung IDP natin. Ano? Then, next, ang um, second phase is yung Performance Monitoring and Coaching. Dito, nagkakaroon ng Performance Monitoring and Coaching of the, uh, and the review, media review ng uh, ating RPMS. Next, the third one, the third phase is the Performance Review and Evaluation. Uh, Dito sa performance, uh, ayan. this is where uh, the year-end review and assessment, evaluation of portfolio and co uh, computation of final rating takes place. Ano? Diyan yung ginagawa. Ay, by the way, dun sa ating, uh, dun sa ating uh, performance monitoring and coaching, kasama na din dun yung ating uh, classroom observation. Ano po? 
And then, the last one, ito na yung uh, performance rewarding and development planning. Finalization na po yan ng ating RPMS. Okay. Palayas lang po yan. Wala namang masyadong pinag-iba dun sa ating, ano, dun sa ating uh, previous RPMS cycle. So, figure 2, the RPMS timeline for teachers. So, ito yung timeline. Ito yung uh, in connection pa rin dun sa ating RPMS cycle. Ano? So, isa-isahin natin. RPMS cycle phase 1. So, performance, planning, and commitment. So, ang mga ginagawa natin dito, discussion of RPMS, PPST tools. So, ipinapaliwanag sa atin ang tungkol, lalo na ngayon, may bagong guidelines. So, magkakaroon tayo malamang ng mga lock session, inset tungkol dito sa panibagong guidelines ng RPMS. This is also where we do self-assessment with initial uh, individual development planning. So, nagkakaroon tayo ng... Uh, self-assessment tool dati nag, may isa tayo di ba yung elect, electronic uh, self-assessment tool last school year wala po tayong walang nailabas na ganito so hintay natin kung may ilalabas ngayon na mga uh, electronic self-assessment tool or kung anong gagamitin natin ano so, ang mga tools na gagamitin natin, yung RPMS manuals for teachers and school heads, tapos yung SAT nga, yung self-assessment tool, maghintay tayo sa ating um, ICT kung merong ilalabas na e-SAT. Kung wala, malamang magmano-mano ulit tayo dito, mag-fill out ng uh, form, ng SAT form. And then, yung ating uh, individual development plan na gagamitin natin ka part 4 siya ng ating IPCRF. Ano? So, maghahanda na tayo para sa ating individual development plan. Okay? So, ang gumagawa nito, yung discussion ng RPMS, syempre yung ating mga raters ang magdi-discuss sa atin ng ating RPMS. At ginagawa ito, this is scheduled in the month before the start of classes. Since ang ating uh, bagong guidelines ay ilinabas in the middle of the school year. Nasa mid-year na po tayo. So, ngayon lang ilinabas ang ating bagong guidelines. More or less, tamang-tama ngayong uh, week na to, meron tayong uh, inset week natin to. Mid-year break ng mga bata, inset week ng ating mga guro. So, dapat malamang sa malamang ngayon to i-discuss. Ano po, yung bagong guidelines. And mind you, dahil ngayon lang ito linabas, uh, mamaya ay sasabi, uh, babanggitin natin, ipapaliwanag natin na for this school year, dalawang COT lang po ang i-require sa atin since lumabas siya ay uh, end of second quarter na. So, third quarter and fourth quarter, COT lang po ang i-require sa atin. Pero, yung dalawang susunod na taon, we will be required to do classroom observation per quarter. So, apat po for school year. Ano? Okay, so yung self-assessment natin, tsaka yung individual development planning, this should happen on the first to second month of the first quarter. Medyo mangangarag tayo ngayon kasi kailangan na, na, na rin natin gawin to at the same time. Ano po? Next, phase 2. Ang phase 2, dito na namang yayari yung classroom observation. Okay? So, sa classroom observation, syempre, ang gagamitin natin yung ating COT tool. Meron tayong bagong COT tool na naka-enclose din dito sa, ano na to, sa, sa DepEd Memorandum. Hey, ano ba yun? Sa DepEd Memorandum na ito, ang bawat, uh, ang bawat COT po, ang classroom observation tool natin has... Uh, nine indicators uh, Tama Nine indicators po nung nakaraan Meron tayong ten indicators po Para sa teachers uh, Proficient teachers Tapos parang nine para sa mga Highly proficient O eight Hindi ko na masyado matandaan Sorry Pero this time magkakaroon tayo ng nine indicators Para sa ating Classroom observation So syempre ang classroom observation Shall be performed by the ratees with the raters. So, this should be within the school year once every quarter. Okay? Next one is the accomplishment of PMCF. So, yung rater should accomplish the performance monitoring and coaching form. So, si rater po ang gumagawa ng PMCF. Ano po? According to the performance monitoring done with the ratee. So, ang 
Okay, so uh, this should be done at least once every quarter. Ang PMCF po ay ginagawa every quarter. Hello, mga raters. Next one po, ang media review and assessment and revisiting the individual development plan. So, i-check na po, i-check dapat sa phase 2 ng mga raters yung draft na IPCRF IDP ng mga ratis. Okay? At saka yung mid-year review form ginagawa na, po, na din po natin during phase 2. So, ang gumagawa nito ay uh, both the ratings and the waiters. So, it should be done within the 5th to 6th month of the school year. Next one, punta naman tayo sa phase 3 ng ating RPMS cycle. Napasobra lang. Ayan. Phase 3. Sa phase 3, gumagawa tayo ng performance assessment of teachers. So, dito po, nagdapat meron na tayong uh, nabuong IPCRF teachers portfolio uh, by phase 3 po. Tapos, uh, dapat na pa-check na natin to with our raters and approving authorities. This should be done at least a week after scheduled graduation. So, a week bago mag-graduation, dapat natapos na natin ang uh, ating portfolio at ready for checking. Then, for for the phase 4, performance rewarding and development planning. So, ito na yung finaliz finalization ng ating IDP. Yung IPCRF natin, dapat tapus tapusin na by this time, uh, by the ratings. Tapos, sasubmit na natin yung IPCRF sa ating raters. Final IPCRF sa ating raters. This should be done at least a week after scheduled graduation. A week after po ng graduation, submission na po ito. Okay, so kasama na dito yung IPTRF Data Collection to Schools Division Office. So submission na po yan hanggang sa Division Office. So that's the RPMS timeline po uh, as per the RPMS cycle. Okay. So, punta na tayo dito sa RPMS PPST Indicators. Mag-usapan natin ito ng mabilis lang. So, teachers who will use the pro proficient tools are expected to be professionally independent in the application of skills vital to the teaching and learning process. Okay, so alam na natin yan. Ang, um, the following teachers positions, yung teacher 1 to 3 po ang gagawa ulit ng ating, um, ang gagamit ng ating RPMS tools for proficient teachers, teacher 1 to 3. Ngayon, the additional teacher position, kasi nga meron tayong uh, uh, naririnig ng mga proposal for uh, additional teaching position. So, proficient teacher pa rin po hanggang teacher 6 or 7 ba? Proficient teacher pa rin po yun. Next one is the master teachers. Sobra. Master teacher, lahat po ng master, one, master teacher 1, 2, 3, and 4, they belong to the uh, highly proficient teachers. So, ang gagamitin po nila is yung ating uh, RPMS tools for highly proficient teachers. Okay? Uh, number 9, tingnan natin number 9. The 37 PPST indicators for both proficient and highly proficient tools shall be divided across the three school years. So, so yun binabanggit ko kanina, no? 37 PPST indicators uh, distributed sa tatlong school year. Each with a total of 15 indicators composed of classroom observable indicators and non-classroom observable indicators and the plus factor. Okay? So, bawat, um, bawat school year, meron tayong 15 indicators kasama na yung mga COIs and uh, non-classroom observable indicators and the plus factor. So, tingnan natin to. The three-year distribution of PPST indicators for, for proficient teachers. Ano? So, tingnan natin yan. Ayan. So, dito pinapakita ko pa paano dinistribute yung uh, 37 indicators ng PPST sa buong uh, three years. So, for the first year, ayan, ang objective po ng ating RPMS ay 15 objectives kasama ay pang labing lima yung plus factor. So, kung mapapansin nyo, meron tayong isa, dalawa, tatlo, apat, lima, anim, pito, walo, siyam na, na objective para po sa uh, classroom observable indicators. Ano po? Kaya yun sinasabi ko sa inyo na nine po ang indicators natin sa COT. 
while the others are non-classroom observable indicators. So ayan, kung mapapansin nyo, bawat school year ay meron tayong uh, 14 objectives plus uh, 1, magiging 15 because of the plus factor. Pero kung mapapansin nyo, sa bawat school year, nagbabago yung position ng uh, classroom observable indicators and non-classroom observable indicators. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. On the second year, year 2, uh, meron pa rin tayong uh, limang uh, classroom observable, uh, non-classroom observable indicators and nine classroom observable indicators. Okay? And then, dito sa year 3, medyo naka-blur pa ang year 3 dito sa memorandum. Baka may plano pa silang iba dito. So, we still have, uh, oh, we actually have 6. Six na po ang, ang non-classroom observable indicators dito sa year 3 para sa proficient teachers. Ibig sabihin, walo na lang ang classroom observable indicator. Okay. Tingnan naman natin ang sa proficient, ang uh, highly proficient teachers. Okay? So, ang highly proficient teachers then will have the same number of objectives para sa kanilang RPMS. So, uh, para sa unang taon, that is for 20, 2022 to 2023, meron silang isa, dalawa, tatlo, apat, lima, anim na classroom observable indicators. Ibig sabihin, meron silang walong non-classroom observable indicators. For the second year, may magkakaroon sila ng walo. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 na kanilang classroom observable indicators sa second year at meron silang limang um, non-classroom observable indicators ay anim na non-classroom observable indicators and on the third year 1, 2, 3, 4 apat na lang ang classroom observable indicators nila at uh, sampung non-classroom observable indicators this, is dep this depends on the distribution nga po ng 37 uh, indicators ng PPST okay Kasi dinistribute po yon into 3 years. Okay. The weight per each indicator. Ang scoring na natin. Ano po? So for objectives 1 to 14, 7% each. So that is a total of 98% of our RPMS. Plus 2% na lang po ang ating plus factor. Dating 5%, ngayon 2% na lang. Okay. That's a total of 100%. Okay. So, with regards to the performance indicators, ang lahat po ng classroom observable indicators will be measured through quality and efficiency. Okay? So, quality and efficiency po ang pagbabatayan ng uh, classroom observable indicators. Kung mapapansin nyo, walang timeliness po para sa mga classroom observable indicators. However, dun sa mga non-classroom observable indicators, they will be measured through the quality, efficiency, and timeliness. Okay? So, tatlo na po ang performance indicators ng bawat uh, non-classroom observable uh, indicators. That applies to both uh, proficient and non-proficient uh, ah, ano? Proficient and highly proficient teacher, sorry. Ayan. So, um, nakalagay dito yung mga iba't ibang um, RPMS tools na naka-attach, nakasama dito sa ating uh, RPMS guidelines. Ano? And this is how we can download the RPMS PPFT multi-year guidelines. Ayan po. The aforementioned tools may also be accessed using the QR code below or through this link. Ayan po yung link. I-share ko din yan sa ating description box para po madali nyo ma-download. So, this can be accessed using the official DepEd email address po. In case the employee does not yet have a DepEd email address, they may request from their respective Division Information Technology Officers or ITO, Division ITO. Okay? Guidelines for Classroom Observation. Ito. Ito yung binabanggit ko po kanina. For school year 2022 to 2023, only two classroom observations are required which shall be conducted in the last two quarters. 
So, third quarter po and fourth quarter. Since kare-release lang po nitong guidelines na to. Pero, for the next year and the ne and the year after after that, apat na classroom observation po ang i-require. That is, one uh, classroom observation per quarter. Punta naman tayo. So, this is the schedule and distribution of classroom observable indicators across quarters for proficient teachers. Okay? Para sa unang taon, dahil gagamit tayo ng uh, uh, third and fourth lang ang ating magiging uh, classroom observation. So, for the third quarter, yung ating ang um, CO1 o COI1 o yung classroom observable indicator 1 under 1.1.2 ng PPST uh, indicators. Okay? So, ayan po. Mamaya maintindihan natin yan dun sa classroom observable, ay, uh, classroom observation tool. This is for the year 2, kasi ang year 2 natin ay uh, apat na quarter na tayo, apat na classroom observation na ipaperform natin. Ganun din naman sa mga highly proficient teachers. So, year 1, that's for this school year, third and fourth quarter classroom observation. Okay. Ito, may magandang importante ritong nabanggit eh. The average rating of the classroom observation done across quarters shall constitute the final rating for each uh, classroom observation uh, indicators. Additional classroom observations may be conducted for purposes of technical assistance to teachers to improve their teaching practice. So, kung kailangan po ng additional na classroom observation, pwede po itong i-request ng ating rater to improve the teaching practice. All classroom observation for performance evaluation purposes shall be scheduled in advance. Okay? So, dapat meron ng uh, communication between the rating and the rater kung kailan sila magpapa-observe. So, this should be scheduled at least three working days before the classroom observation. Okay? Kasi nga, meron pa tayong mga pre-conference uh, pre na ginagawa bago yung actual classroom observation. Diba? So, dapat this should be in advance. In case of unforeseen circumstances and fortuitous events that are outside the control of the schools, Halimbawa po yung mga natural or man-made calamities or disasters, lockdowns, concerned schools may be allowed to deviate from the prescribed timeline of conducting classroom observation. So, kung kinakailangan, pwede pong i-reschedule. Okay, ito number 23. Binold pa nila dito ha, kasi napaka-importante. The default mode of classroom observation shall be in-person, face-to-face observation. Okay, so dahil lahat po tayo ay naka-face-to-face na ngayon, Importante po na tayo malaman natin na ang observation, wala na po ngayon asynchronous, synchronous, online observation o through video. Ano po? So, lahat po ng class observation shall be conducted in person or face-to-face. -face. However, in case of any national pronouncements that may affect the operations of the school, halimbawa, biglang nagkaroon ng community quarantine, wag naman sana, Implementation of blended learning, biglang nag-announce, doon lang po pwedeng gamitin ang letter A, online synchronous classroom observation, online asynchronous classroom observation, and the classroom observation via learning action cell. Okay? Doon lang po pag may national pronouncement po. Ano po? So, ano pa ang bang importante i-discuss natin dito? Uh, this is the rater, uh, gano'n pa rin naman yung rater, rater approving authority uh, matrix. Ano po? So, para sa mga teacher, ang rater po natin, observer, ay master teacher, head teacher, o kaya assistant principal, approving authority po natin ay ang principal or school head. Para sa mga head teacher or master teacher, ang kanila pong rater, observer, ay ang principal o ang school head. And approving authority is the superintendent for small and medium divisions, Assistant Superintendent, Large and Very Large Division. So, punta naman natin yung mga appendices, attachment po dito sa guidelines na ito. So, meron tayo ditong RPMS tool for Teacher 1 to 3, 
Uh, that's proficient teachers for school year 2022-2023. So, kung mapapansin nyo, ang attachment po natin sa guidance nito ay tatlong RPMS tool for proficient teachers at tatlong RPMS tools for highly proficient teachers that is applicable for three school years. Kasi magkakaiba po yung mga magiging mga objectives po sa bawat taon, sa bawat school year. Ano? So, ito po yung gagamitin natin ngayon ng mga... Uh, na mga R na RPMS tool ano po so magkakaroon tayo ng bukod na video para ipaliwanag po ang bawat isang uh, objective na ito katulad po nung ginawa natin dati ano so abangan po natin yan so ayan yung ating mga RPMS uh, tool yung bawat sa ba bawat objective sa bawat uh, KRA okay so katulad ng pinag-usapan natin kanina Meron tayong 15 objective para sa ating RPMS tool for this school year. Ah, for every school year, for that matter. So, pang 15 yung ating plus factor. Okay? So, dito po, may, meron silang dinagdag na summary. Ano? So, nakalagay dito kung ano-ano yung mga dapat nating i-present. So, for KRA 1, objective 1 to 3, at saka KRA, KRA 2, Objective 4, 5, 6, and then KRA 3, Objective 7, lahat po yan ay Classroom Observation Tool. Number of MOBs ay apat, pero dapat to ay dalawa lang dahil uh, dalawa lang tayo para sa quarter na to. Ano po? So, Classroom Observation Tool. Tapos, sa KRA 3 po, Uh, objective 8, ang ating mode of verification, proof of attendance, minutes of the meeting, minutes of lack uh, sessions, tapos reflection notes, and any equivalent as uh, form or document. Uh, ano ba ang... So, at most ay apat po na number of uh, MOBs ang nire-require sa objective 8. For objective 9 and 10... Ay COT form kasi ano din po to classroom observable indicators din. For KRA 4 objective 11, ay ito po yung uh, required MOV. KRA 4 objective 12, ah uh, ito naman. Papaliwanag po natin yan sa bukod na video na po masyado pong hahaba ang ating video kung uh, isasama pa natin ang explanation ng bawat isang yan. Okay? Ang plus factor natin, objective 15, isa lang pong MOV ang inihingi dyan. Any one of the following. Okay? So, yan po yung ating RPMS tool for this school year. Closer of terms. Tapos, ito naman yung for next school year. Mahaba-habang explanation pala to, no? So, ang gagawin natin ay, uh, uunahin natin yung for this school year na uh, explanation sa mga susunod nating videos, ano? And then, meron ding summary dyan. At ito na yung ating uh, for 2024 to 2025. Yun yung siguro tinutukoy natin na medyo madugo. Kasi marami, iba-iba bawat school year, ano? Tapos, uh, pero kaya-kaya natin yan. So, ito naman yung RPMS tool for Master Teacher 1 to 4 or Highly Proficient Teacher. So, meron din silang tatlo niyan for school year, uh, this school year, tapos 2023 to 2024, tapos 2024 to 2025. So, meron din silang summary dyan. Hopefully, may paliwanag natin ng both for proficient teachers and highly proficient teachers. So, abangan lang natin sa ating mga susunod na mga videos, ang ating magiging uh, pagpapaliwanag kung paano bumuo ng ating RPMS portfolio. Okay, so ito na yung ating uh, COT tool, yung si, uh, gagamitin natin for classroom observation. So, meron tayong tatlong COT tool din na naka-attach dito. So, ito yung una, SHAM, yung classroom observable indicators. Ayan, nakalagay dyan. Uh, para sa school year na to. Sa next school year, SHAM pa rin ang ating uh, number of indicators for the third school year, that's 24 to 
8 na lang ang ating classroom observable indicators. Ano po? Para sa master teachers naman, for this school year, 6 lang ang kanilang classroom observable indicators. And then, next school year, 8. And then, for the last school year, 4 na lang ang kanilang classroom observable indicators. Okay? So, ito yung inter-observer agreement form para sa uh, proficient teachers. So, kaparehas lang yan nung ano. Kaparehas lang yan nung ating uh, RPMS tool o yung ano? COT form. Okay. Inter-observer agreement form. Modes of classroom observation. Ayan. Ulit, inulit po dito sa Annex D. Yeah, only uh, the default mode of classroom observation to be adapt adapted by all public schools unless otherwise specified by the DepEd Central Office ay in-person or face-to-face -face observation. Wala na pong iba. There will be an alternative classroom observation modes and it shall only be adapted by public schools as a result of unforeseen circumstances that affect the day-to-day uh, operations of the school subject to internal guidelines issued by the DepEd Central Office. So, otherwise declared, ang ating po gagamitin lang ay in-person or face-to-face -face observation. Classroom observation process. Alam na natin yan kung paano mag-conduct ng classroom observation. Okay? So... Ayan po ang nakapaloob sa ating bago at mainit-init pang guidelines ng ating uh, RPMS for this school year and for the next two more school years. Ano po? So, kaya tinawag ang guidelines ito na multi-year guidelines of the RPMS PPST. Okay? So, dahil 37 indicators of the uh, PPST are distributed to three school years in 15 objectives per school year. Ano po? So, kung meron pa po kayong tanong, meron kayong gustong maintindihan, at marami pang gustong isuggest na video, pwede po kayong mag-comment sa ating comment box, and I will gladly reply back to all of you. And, umpisa na po ito, maghanda na tayo, umpisa na ito ng ating RPMS serye. Anda na ba kayo para sa ating RPMS serye? Parang na-excite ako dito. Parang nakakatawang gumawa uli ng RPMS serye. Ano po? So, wala nang bitawan to. Dire-diretso na tayo. Muna para sa ating RPMS serye. And I will see you again on our next video. Uh, please do like this video if you happen to do so. And subscribe to our channel. Huwag niyo pong kalimutang i-click yung notification bell to bell all para siguradong walang makakalagpas na video na i-upload ko. Para lahat po makita niyo at makafollow kayo on how are we going to complete our RPMS portfolio for this school year and the next two more school years. I will see you again in our next video. God bless everyone and keep safe.